Hey, welcome back, podcast friends. And I'm so glad that you are here with me again today because today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I have a goal where I want to read every single day. I want to read at least 10 pages every day or at 70 pages a week. That's just kind of a goal that I've done. And I wanted to talk to you today because I just read a 389 page book that I got so engrossed in it that it actually took me three weeks to be able to read this because I already knew a lot of the stuff that was in here and it makes perfect sense. But I, my eyes were opened up to so much more that I wasn't aware of. And I really feel like you need to, you need to know what this is. And like, like, just like the title says, what are the most common adverse drug reactions with statins? And by the end of this podcast, you should know that that is a very, very big question. And the name of the book that I'm going to be talking to you about is called How Statin Drugs Really Lower Cholesterol and Kill You One Cell at a Time. And this was written by James Yosef and his wife, who's Dr. Hannah Yosef. She's an MD. And they wrote this book um, mainly because James Yosef was also having issues that he found out was totally related to, um, to these statins. And since then, um, after 2012, he actually died. Uh, but, but his wife went ahead and published this book. Now, before I get started, I want to make sure that everybody is very, very aware that the information that's given in this podcast is solely for educational purposes. It's not intended as medical advice at all. Okay. Anything I say, I definitely want you to be talking to your physician about it, but be aware that guaranteed your physician will not know this stuff. I am a doctor of pharmacy. I've been a doctor of pharmacy for over 35 years working in the hospital setting. And I was not even aware of this, but it makes perfect sense. And I hope I can get it to make sense to you. So first we're talking about statins. So for those of you who don't know who statins are, which I bet is a very few number of people because, because the drug companies have done such a great job in promoting these types of drugs and doing all their marketing. Like I said, 80% of the revenue goes in marketing anymore. They don't even worry about making new drugs, but they've marketed to everybody, including they've marketed to the medical journals, which they pay. They market with peer reviews, which they pay. And they market to um, all the physicians just by the stuff that they put in their articles. So anyway, um, what is a statin? Uh, just so you know, a statin, the ones we're talking about, and the reason they're called statin is because the generic name of each one of these is, it ends in the word statin. So you have lovastatin, which is Mevacor or Altoprev. You have Simvastatin, which is Zocor. You have Pravastatin, which is Pravacol. You have Atorvastatin, which is Lipitor. You have Rosuvastatin, which is Crestor. You have Fluvastatin, which is Lescol and Patavastatin, which is Lavelo. And I'm going to be saying a lot of stuff here in the first part of this podcast that I, I'm, I'm not wanting you to try to memorize it or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you a big overall umbrella. And I promise in the middle of the podcast, I'm going to break this down very simple so you understand exactly what it means. So right now, you don't really need to memorize anything or, or whatever you're going to do. Just kind of understand the whole general thing. So that's what um, statins are. Okay. Statins are given to people to lower their LDL cholesterol. That's what they do. And the way they do this, another name for a statin is called a 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutaryl coenzyme A reductase inhibitor. And that all gets shortened down to just an HMG coax reductase inhibitor. And, and, and don't worry, I'm going to explain this. So just, just know that that's what it is. It's an HMG coenzyme A reductase inhibitor. And what these do is these lower your LDL cholesterol. Okay. First, first, I want to make this very, very clear. High LDLs have never, ever, ever been shown to decrease the incidence of any cardiovascular disease. Your LDLs don't even play a part in, well, all, all the things in our bodies play a part, but lower in LDLs, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And lower in LDLs the way these do is the worst thing you could do for your body. And it actually does kill you one cell at a time. And I'm going to explain why that is. So first they're selling these things to all these people to lower their LDLs. And there's no reason to ever lower, lower your LDLs. LDLs 
LDLs are very, very vital to human life. Without LDLs, you would die. Without cholesterol, you would die. These are vital. These are not bad like the food companies and drug companies are trying to tell you that they are. There's a reason they're doing that because all of this cholesterol only comes from animal products. You don't get cholesterol in food and in, in uh, vegetables and seeds and, and, you know, plant-based products. It only comes from animal products. Well, since all these food manufacturers, all their stuff comes from, from plant-based foods, they are trying to get you to eat more of theirs. So you stay away from the animal meat. And the best way to do that is to tell you that animal meat's bad, red meat's bad, fat's bad, cholesterol bad. It's a lie. It's an outright lie. It is not bad. It's vital to life. And I'll explain that as we go through this. So just be aware. Um, the only really, so that it, it is toxic. And the only real, real benefit of any of these statins is to increase revenue for the drug companies and for the shareholders of those drug companies. That is their sole purpose is to increase revenue. So what these do, so, so let's break that down. So what are LDLs? And, and I've actually talked about this in previous um, podcasts. In episode number 43, it's titled, Are High LDLs Bad For You? And also in my podcast, episode seven, I did things to look for when you're having a lipid panel done. Okay, or cholesterol panel or however you want to call it. So I've already talked about this. So I'm not going to go into this real deep. I'm just going to kind of remind people if they heard it or whatever. An LDL actually stands for a low density lipoprotein. So in my podcast, I explained, picture this like a big ship and, and your body is trying to get um, all this fat, your triglycerides and cholesterol circulated all through your body for all the numerous, numerous things that our body uses cholesterol and fat for. Not just for energy, like a lot of people know it is used for energy. It's also used for all of our joints, protection of all our joints and cholesterol and fat are in the cell membrane of every single cell in your body. So in order for your cells to replicate, to rejuvenate, to grow and to thrive, it has to have cholesterol and fat. Without it, your cell dies. Okay. So an LDL is called a low density lipoprotein. So picture that like a big ship and down in the cargo, you have cholesterol and you have triglycerides. Those are the two fats that are extremely vital to life. But your body has to be able to circ they circulate that around all throughout your blood so the cells can use it where they need. And so the way they do it is they wrap a protein around it and that puts it in the blood. And then now, because you can't put just fat in the blood because fat and water don't mix and your blood's mainly water. So it's in the ship, down, down the hole of this ship, the cargo of the ship. And the ship, this LDL, this low density lipoprotein ship just moves around and puts the cholesterol and fat in all the cells wherever the body needs it. Okay, so LDLs are extremely important and vital to life. This is not something that you're wanting to decrease. So what happens when, when you get hungry, your body is looking for nutrients. It's that there's something going on inside of it where it needs nutrients. So this could be micronutrients of, of vitamins or minerals, or it could be macronutrients. Maybe it's needing protein or it's needing cholesterol or it's needing fat. Those are the nutrients that your body needs. Protein, cholesterol, fat vitamins and minerals. That's how it works. That's how it works best. It does not need carbohydrates. It does not need you to eat a single carbohydrate. It is not needed. And I've talked about this in other podcasts also. So what happens is the brain says, okay, I need nutrients. So it sends out these hunger signals to the, to the body, the body. Now you eat, the food goes down into your intestines, it's broken up and gets put into your bloodstream. So now as you're, as these nutrients are floating around your bloodstream, the cells are, are monitoring themselves. Each cell is monitoring itself and it knows what nutrients it needs. And it puts little receptors on the outside of the cell to pull these nutrients in. So picture like a bunch of, picture a little cell, a little round cell and picture like a bunch of little, um, maybe baseball gloves. And as the nutrients go by in the bloodstream, it reaches out and it catches whatever nutrient needs, brings it into the cell so the cell can function. That's kind of what it is. Um, and every single cell is um, has a certain life. So there, a cell is born, 
a cell is actually one cell divides into two cells and divides into four and the eight and 16 and 32 and so on and so forth. So whenever your cell dies, it, it divides up into different, different cells. And each cell has its own half or its own life. So like um, all the cells of the gut, because you're eating, so you're sloughing off cells all the time. A gut cell lasts for about 10 hours to five days, kind of depending on how you eat. Your skin cells, these are always replicating. These are always sloughing off. So a skin cell only has a half life or has a life of about two weeks. Then your red blood cells, they have, they have a life of about four months is all they have from the time they're first start until they actually get, get, taken away uh, in your body. Um, bone cells last about 10 years. Liver cells list, list last, last about 300 to 500 days. But um, that's what they do. All these cells, every single cell, as it dies, it, it starts dividing and replicating. And that's how our bodies clear itself of dead debris. That's how our body rejuvenates, makes new healthy cells. that keeps our bodies growing, thriving, surviving. And that's so important. And it has to have all these nutrients. And the two of the vital, vital things that this is needed for, not only growth, but dividing the DNA, and then it grows more, and then it divides into two cells. It needs all that in order to work. So let's look at the products that we're talking about. We're talking about cholesterol, and we're talking about, well, first, let's talk about cholesterol. Cholesterol, they're, they're trying to tell you cholesterol is bad. It's an absolute lie. That's never been shown anything. Cholesterol is vital. Because one, just like you said, it's one of the major components of every single cell membrane in your body. Trillions of cells and they, every one of them needs cholesterol in order to form. But besides that, cholesterol is also used to make a lot of your hormones like vitamin D. And we all know how important vitamin D is, especially after the little pandemic that we just had. Um, it's made used uh, to make cortisol. Cortisol is your... That's your um, stress hormone. So whenever you're stressed, your body produces cortisol and that helps you handle that stress. Without cholesterol, you don't have cortisol. You also need, um, without cholesterol, you won't have testosterone. And without cholesterol, you won't have estrogen. All these are made of cholesterol. But besides cholesterol, there's another very, very, very important thing that is needed for these cells to grow, live, thrive, and survive, and to be able to replicate and rejuvenate new cells. So there's cholesterol, and there's also what's called isoprenoids. And again, I'm just throwing some terms at it. You'll understand here pretty soon. But isoprenoids, these are things like uh, things you need for normal cell cycles. So it's like your transfer RNA. If you don't know what that is, that, that's fine. Um, coenzyme Q10, if you've ever heard of CoQ10, that's an extremely important for cell energy. And this is how you produce ATP, which is your body's energy source. You have to have CoQ10. Heme A is needed for cell energy. Bellicol is needed for, for membranes, for nerves and, and fetal development. That's needed. And then they also make signaling proteins. Okay. So all these are made from isoprenoids. Without isoprenoids, the cell dies. Without cholesterol, the cell dies. So what happens is both of these are made from the same precursor. So you've got, you're going to have a product called mevalinate. Mevalinate is what's in the pathway and mevalinate makes cholesterol and mevalinate also makes these isoprenoids. Okay, so you have to have mevalinate. And what happens is as these as your cell starts needing things, it puts these little receptors out in your body and it starts bringing these receptors. It starts bringing nutrients in. So it brings in food, the food that you eat, and it has this this HMG, HMG CoA reductase or HMG CoA. And both of those two things are in the cell. And, and, and please, I'm really trying to make this simple. So that's why I'm kind of stuttering a lot. Picture this like two little Legos. Okay, so you have three Legos. You have two small ones and one big one. The one big Lego is just perfect size for these two small ones that sit right on perfect on top of it. And that's what it does. So you have one of these little Legos is HMG-CoA. The other little Lego is the food that you're eating, the nutrients that you bring in, and those have hydrogens on them. And then both of these two little Legos, HMG and the food, attach to a, a molecule called reductase. And this is very important because once those two things attach, attach to reductase, reductase changes those, moves those hydrogen items over 
And that is what ends up turning in. Uh, it's a chemical re reaction that produces a mevalinate. Okay. So I'm just going to go through that once again. There's three Legos. One Lego is HMG-CoA. One Lego is a hydrogen donor from your food. Both of these attach to reductase. Once that touches the reductase, that makes a chemical process that causes mevalinate. Once mevalinate is there, mevalinate gets turned into cholesterol and mevalinate also gets turned into these isoprenoids. Okay, that's the system. That, that's how this is supposed to work. But what, act, what happens is if your body senses that it doesn't have enough cholesterol in it, okay, what it does is it puts out these little receptors, these little LDL receptors on its outside, just like the ketchup mix. And it's going to, as the LDLs go through, it brings it in to the, to the um, cell. So, and then it makes this product. So how do statins work? Okay. Picture those three Legos again, but now instead of those two Legos where you have your HMG CoA and you also have these, your food with the hydrogen donors, it blocks all that. And the statin attaches to the reductase. So it attaches to the reductase and it blocks those. So HMG CoA cannot attach and neither can the, the hydrogen donor from your food. Nothing can attach. Well, if nothing attaches that reductase, then your body doesn't produce mevalinate. If it doesn't produce, produce mevalinate, it doesn't produce cholesterol, and it also does not produce these isoprenoids. So what your cell does is it senses this, that now there's something blocking the reductase, and it's not getting cl the cholesterol and the isoprenoids that it needs, so it thinks that there's something wrong with its system. So what it does is it starts producing more of these reductases, more of these the big Legos. It starts producing these. And as it does, these cause more LDL receptors to go around the outside of the cell, trying to bring more LDL, more cholesterol in it because it's vital for life. So you're actually bringing the blood cholesterol down, your blood LDL is down because this LDL is going inside the cell, but it's doing it because you are killing the cell and the cell is trying to survive. As long as that, as long as that statin is blocking that reductase, your cell can't live. It, 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 it dies. And so that's why it lowers your blood LDLs because it's trying to pull it in the cell because the cell is trying to survive. Okay. This is so important that you understand this. Um, but <laughs> So, so, so remember, so that's what you're doing. You're, you're starving the cell. And not only is the cell not producing cholesterol, which is what the drug companies are trying to tell you, that's a good thing. And it's not, but not only is it decreasing the cholesterol that's being produced by every cell, because every single cell in your, every single cell in your body produces cholesterol and your brain uses more cholesterol than your entire body. I mean, cholesterol is so important. But when you block it, the cells die. And you're not only blocking cholesterol being produced, you're also blocking these isoprenoids being produced, which has a lot to do with your ATP, your energy production, and everything like this. So you're stopping your whole body's function just for this one toxic thing that you're putting in your body. And so just to, you know, let, to let you know what happens with this, um, one, the drug companies know this. They've been doing this. There was one main drug company that started this, to all this, right before 1980. Kind of started, started back around the 1950s, 1960s. But when they found out that they have a drug that can block cholesterol, they knew that they needed, in order to sell that body, they also knew that this, this drug also is based like cancer. That's what it does. It, it, it blocks the cell from replicating. So they first started studying statins as, as cancer to try to figure out how cancer works because they knew statins were causing cancer. But they, they a drug company got a hold of this. They ignored all that. And all they saw was, hey, this lowers cholesterol. And they knew that because of Ansel Keys and our dietary guidelines, they'd already been talking about how you know, cholesterol is what's bad for you. And so now they have cholesterol is bad. We have a drug can stop cholesterol. So let's start marketing this like crazy. So they chose, totally chose to hide the fact that high, D, high LDLs do not cause cardiovascular disease. That's a lie. And this has been known, like I said, this has been known for, since, you know, for the 80s. They also chose to hide the fact that to decrease blood LDL, is to ditch your body's own survival technique on how cells can, can grow and live and maintain. They also chose to hide the fact that statins kill the cell. And this increases, 
And this is what causes an increase in your reductase and it also disrupts your cell cycles. And the also uh, prenoids that are not being produced now, those also are needed for cell survival. So without those, the cell dies. And they also choose to hide the fact that these adverse effects that I'm getting ready to tell you, these are not adverse effects. Adverse effects, all drugs, all drugs have an adverse effect where you fix one little thing, but come to find out that actually affects something else in the body. And so you have all these other adverse effects. With statins, these are not adverse effects. These are direct effects. This is exactly how statins work. They work to starve and kill your cells. That's what they do. And they're putting this off like, oh, no, they're saving your life because they're lowering your LDL levels. And I've already talked about how crazy that is. OK, so like I said, all drugs have adverse effects. These are direct effects. But there was a study. This is this is there's a program called the Adverse Event Effects Reporting System. OK, and there was a study that was over this. The, the events are reported to this FDA adverse event reporting from quarter four of 1997 to quarter one of 2010, just for one of those statins. This isn't all the statins. This is just one of them, but all the statins work the same way. They all do the same thing. In that short time period from 1997 to 2010, there were 10,086 reports of adverse effects with, with, uh, with these uh, statins. And remember also that they found that only about 1% of all adverse events actually get reported to the um, to this ADR reporting system. Only about 1%. Because just like I said, if you've got if you've got some soreness in your in your muscles or you're kind of going getting some cataracts, can't see really well, they're kind of limited. They are saying, oh, this is just part of natural aging. And so nobody looks into this. So only about 1% really gets big enough to where they actually say this could be caused by the statin and they turn it in. So even though it's only 1%, there's still 10,086 of these that were done. And um, again, the first thing that's affected is usually the GI tract and your liver cells, because those are the ones that you're, you're eating the food. And the, as soon as you eat your food, it gets broken down and goes straight to your liver. So the liver is the main way to detoxify your, um, detoxify your body and to put all the nutrients that you eat, put those into whatever the body needs. But of those 10,086 reports, remember that in the short period, and this is only with one of the statins, 8% of these patients had liver damage. Of those with liver damage, 92% were liver cell damage, 6% was liver failure, and 2% were liver transplant. Then of these 10,086 reports, 37% had muscle damage, and this is muscle pain and muscle weakness. Then of these 10,086 reports, 24% have nerve and brain damage. And this range anywhere from cognition, you know, being able to think clearly, memory loss, emotional problems, personality changes, tremors, lethargy, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. This has, this has everything to do with um, what you see with Lou Gehrig's disease. Also causes seizures, paralysis, deafness, and suicide. Then also of these 10,086 reports, 5% has lung damage. This is like pulmonary fibrosis and edema. Then there's also, um, there were two scientists that looked at just the birth defects because it does cause birth defects also. And there were two scientists in 2004 that looked at the statin exposure in the first trimester. And this is from 1987 to 2001. And when they did this, they found that 42% of the patients they looked at had structural defects at birth. There were, and these were including things like CNS defects, central nervous system defects, uh, holoprosencephaly, which means the brain doesn't divide like, like a normal brain does, hydrocephalus, which means fluid on the brain, missing limbs. We've had some with missing limbs. And then there's a, a, a thing called Vactrel. It's V-A-C-T-E-R-L. And that stands for vertebral, cardiac, tracheal, esophageal, renal, and limb defects. Okay, these were all seen in patients and mothers who were taking statins through the first trimester of, of pregnancy. So that's just another thing. So back again, now of these 10,086 reports, there's also heart damage in 5%, GI damage in 5%, blood vessel damage in 5%, skin reactions in 4%, eye problems in 2%, joint and joint issues in 2%, and then other issues, 3%. Okay, all these adverse effects all from a drug that has no effectiveness, 
lowering LDL does not do anything except make the drug companies money and their shareholders money and direct, direct effects that causes all kinds of toxicity. So, so yes, statins do lower your blood cholesterol. But no, there's no reason to do that. And the only reason it does it is because it's the cells trying to survive, trying to pull this LDL in so it can survive. It doesn't realize that its mechanism to, produ to produce mevalinate and cholesterol and isoprenoids has totally been blocked. So, um, why? Why, why would they tell you all this? And this book, this book, this almost 400 page book, goes deep into the science. Deep, it is referenced galore of all the studies that have been done showing that the drug companies know all this and they're hiding the facts. They're not telling anybody. So this is not your this is not your physician's fault whatsoever. They have no idea either. I guarantee I didn't. And I'm a doctor of pharmacy for over 35 years. I did not know about this. OK, so this isn't your doctor's fault, but but they can be educated. You can give them the book or have them read the podcast, listen to the podcast or whatever you want to do. But um, but I just wanted you to make sure that you realize that these all medications, when they come to the market, they have to prove that they're safe and they have proved they're effective. And when it comes to statins, they definitely are not safe and they definitely are not effective because what they're being used for doesn't even make any sense. So please talk with your physician. If you're on one of these statins, please talk to your physician about getting off of it. Um, and again, physicians don't know. All they know is what the drug companies give them. They read the studies that the drug companies put together. They have no idea the data and the lies that happened while putting that study together. That is very important. And be very aware, just like we've, we've talked about before with the, with the food companies, drug companies are the same way. There is much lying, falsifying of information, omitting the truths. There's a lot of things that these people do before they ever make the article that they they pay to get the article rate they pay peers to peer review it they pay the journals to put the 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 study in there and then they pay people to go around and tell this to doctors and on some doctors they actually pay them to give these medications this is a money thing there is a ton of money trillions of dollars that are being put into this and i i just i really want everybody to understand this so one thing to know is since there's no benefit and there's definitely harm, these drugs can be stopped immediately. It's not like psychotropic drugs where you have to wean them down over time. These, these have no benefits, so they can be stopped immediately. Once you've talked with your physician, you guys talk about it, and you and your physician have to agree on this. They don't have to be weaned. And don't believe me, read, read this book, and I'll give you the name of the book again, just so you know. And the name of the book is how statin drugs really lower cholesterol and kill you one cell at a time as by James and Hannah Yosef. Okay. So given the book, let them listen. The, the information is out there everywhere. It just depends on if you want to go look for it and it's not hard to find out. So that's kind of really what I wanted to let you know. This is how these are all statins work. This is how they kill you one cell at a time. And to be honest, I was very, very nervous. And you can probably tell that in my voice. I was very, very nervous about putting this information out there because I know how powerful drug companies and food companies are. And I know the length that they're going to go through to protect their assets, their profits. That's what they do. But, but I really needed you to know that um, once again, the information I just gave you is not medical advice, okay? This is just for educational purposes. You have got to talk to a physician about this. However, as a Christian and as a Christian who just recently found my, my true God-given power after being in, in medical, you know, and in, in, as a PharmD, doctor of pharmacy for the last 35 years, now that I've realized what drugs are actually doing to people and how nutrients from the food you eat is that is how you're supposed to use it. Food is the only thing that's going to keep us healthy. It is not drugs. And so how, as a Christian, I could not learn this valuable information that I've learned and not pass this on to my listeners. I truly want to help people get healthy. I'm not making a penny off of this. So in general, when you when you kind of don't really believe a study or believe something, 
always follow the money. Who's making money from this, this product that they're selling you. And that will help let you know a lot of stuff. So go out there. This was educational purposes. Do with it as you will. But as a Christian, I really want to help save people's lives. And if I can save them from injustices like this, the least I can do is do a podcast and tell everybody about it. So I hope this helps. I hope it made sense to you. And I hope you keep coming back. So once again, thank you so much for listening and have a great week. And remember, make simple, healthy choices to live a quality life.